Okay, Josh, I've just asked you a hard question and you've got your cell phone out, so that's a good sign. I've asked about the, um, the 26 other candidates. Um, obviously, there's wards, three wards. Will you explain the ward system and how many candidates are running for each? All right, so the different wards split our three towns separately so that, um, so that all of our candidates can't come just from Tokoroa and sell Potato and T-Rail to the highest bidder and take all the rewards. It's to be democratic. And so because Tokoro is the largest, um, it makes up of six ward candidates. Um, Potaru is the next largest and has three, and then T-Rail only has one. But T-Rail also has a community board, which is a great asset to their own town. Um, yeah, yeah the, okay, so I was just going to ask you without looking at your phone, what are the <laughs> candidates? But but you said, look, I've got them on the phone, and yeah. you've, you've actually made, you've read all of their blurbs, I've yeah. read all of their blurbs, um, and you've actually made a list in your head or that you feel yeah. that, you, that you like. So it's interesting. So as a young person, basically we're getting the inside view of what 60% of the population that don't vote are thinking about just on the blurbs. So give us your STV spiel. Yeah, so... Um, Tracy Dean has really only been the mayoral candidate that's responded to me. Um, I quite like her personality and her business sense. Um, and then for the um, ward candidates from t I like Peter, I'm sorry if I pronounce your name wrong, but Peter Schultz. Um, from Pataru I haven't really looked into, no, no one really catches my eye. Um, I'm kind of disconnected from Potaru, I don't really go there much or know anybody. Um, and from Togaroa, I quite like Arama Napolipskim. Um, she's a lawyer and she knows a lot about how the town works. Um, you know, she sees a lot of the, the worst side and helps people through that. So I, I believe that she'll know the genuine Togaroa populace a lot better. Um, I like Amy. Um, She's about my age. She's she's like great. She's got a great business sense. She has her own photography business. Um, I think that we need someone on council already to make sure that um, that we keep everything flowing and to already be there. I don't think it has to be the mayor from council that gives us that direction. It can be anyone. So I think Jeff Gash. Um, would be good. He's a local business owner. Um, and then, who else? Um, I'm very horrible with names. No, Jeff but Nash I see people's faces. Top and they've just changed the rules that um, existing cops can actually stand for council. It used to be the other way around. And oh, really? Yep. And Jeff was an ex-cop, but he got the highest polling candidate numbers three years ago. So technically he should have been deputy mayor for the last three years, except the government. Yeah, so I don't like that unelected people can make decisions. So yes, deputy mayor Jenny Shedock would have been on the council, but she shouldn't have been the deputy mayor. I believe that it should be who the people choose to be the deputy mayor. But then again, I also think that the mayor has to have someone who knows them well, well doesn't know them well, but gets along with them quite well. And um, so it's kind of a catch-22. It's, it's undemocratic, but it's probably for the best that well, someone working with the mayor. My, my read on it is they want to turn it into cabinet where each of the, um, there's portfolios and each of the elected members has a portfolio and the Prime Minister, if you like, is the, the person who dishes out those. So they've created a like cabinet and that's the reason for that. Now I'm working with that and that's why I've called the Deputy Mayor's um, debates and I've got the same cinema response to you. So you're a candidate for a Deputy Mayor just as all the other 26 are. So I'm just observing the interaction that you have. Um, so name the other two mayoral candidates um, you've mentioned, the two women, um, just so that I get an understanding. You, you uh, so there's Alan Blair, he was uh, working out at the mill as a safety officer. Um, I'm not sure he actually knows what safety is. Um, us dairy farmers start off dairy farming at quite a young age and he doesn't believe that a young person should operate a tractor under supervision. I mean, that, I don't know, that's just pretty poor. And then Jared Gallagher, 
He uh, lives in Hamilton. He's a property developer. Um, I don't really know too much about him. Um, he hasn't tried to contact me at all. I just think he's someone out of the community trying to up his own game. So, okay. My, so my two personal choices were out of Jenny Shadok and Tracy Dean. Okay. No, that's it. And and have either of those replied to any of your emails? Uh, so Tracy Dean has. Um, and Jenny I, hasn't. Well, she did, but then after arranging our meeting through email, she for some reason Facebooked me saying she can't come. And then, so I never received that because I'm not a friend on Facebook. And then I emailed her back saying, okay, that's okay, do you want to reschedule? And then nothing. Wow. So 60% of the population are going to be interested in your comments there. So Tracy Dean replied to your email, that's good. Um, so let's go to some more of the candidates that are in the, in the Tokra Award, because you're in the Tokra Award, so you actually yes. get to vote as well. So. Yeah, so I get to pick six. Um, David Wayne, so he's an accountant. Um, uh, he worked, well, my boss, he works for him. Um, not for him, but with him. And from what I've been told, he's a real straight up guy. He knows a lot of stuff, obviously. Yes, Wayne, yeah. yeah, obviously he's pretty good business sense if he's an accountant he can see see what's going on so I think he'll be a great help especially when the council picks a terrible CEO so the, um, so the first three the first four you've picked the only Jeff Gash is the only sitting one and three yes. new ones yep rattle down the other so uh, Brenda Watkins she's also on the council I don't actually know her but um, I've been told a few good things about her and so she was on last time and she missed out um, with Cocky Blair getting in so the public had voted for oh her yep with that okay who's your last person my last person is uh, Leo so I don't know your last name because why I'm pressuring you for this Josh here's the situation if you're picked as deputy mayor and God forbid there's a tragic accident, you're immediately in as mayor. <laughs> now in the first two years, um, they will have a by-election, so you run the mayor yep. side of things and then they have another mate district-wide. But if it's in the last year, um, it can actually be the case the deputy mayor is the mayor for the last year. Now, if you're the raised from deputy mayor to mayor, you get to choose a deputy yourself and rejig the whole council or whatever so that's why I'm asking you these questions who you mm. choose as deputy even though you're one of the 26 councillors because you could be selected as deputy and then for unforeseen circumstances you are in a position to in the next three years to choose a deputy mayor yourself so you read so out if I was to uh, sorry the last name sorry was Leah Cowley um, she's great I've met with her um, she's Quite, um, quite good in the cultural background. Um, she also knows a lot of people who have done great in the community and she knows a lot of history about Tokara, which I implore. And I think every councillor, if they are elected in or before, they should be researching our community. Okay. Um, and, and then so if I was to choose a deputy mayor, if, say if I was deputy and something bad happened yeah. and then I had to choose one it would be Peter from t -Rail if he got in. Excellent um, and yeah. is there a runner-up to that? Probably Leah. Um, I'm picking the, the older generation of people because obviously I'm young and I lack that other and, perspective. And a, third, and a third choice for deputy because I'm sort of hinting at um, I'm hinting at Jeff Gash here simply because of you he know and he's in the thrust of it with yep. regards to so that's why I'm sort of suggesting that that and he was also the highest polling candidate mm. three years ago so you know what I mean and it yep. fits in so I just wanted to um, raise that because the first two that's fine because I've actually met Pete out there the coffee man and he's a staunch supporter and he said to me he's interested in community boards so mm. I don't get to vote in T-Rail because I'm here in Tote Ward but I definitely give thumbs up for for anyone that promotes community boards yeah okay um, now I've asked you that hard question I want you to ask me a hard question <laughs> okay as what do you think your biggest concern is with the council at this very minute? 
Um, I sat through the last council meeting and the audit and risk person came through and he is an independent and he was telling them. So the rules have changed in health and safety. The councillors don't go to jail but the CEO does if, if something tragic happens and it's shown that the council hasn't taken um, due care, like there's negligence on that part. So that's the big thing and when asked about that, they have to even go down to the sensitivities of the staff, the governance, they have to make sure that, that the staff aren't under pressure, that there's no bullying in the workplace. So there's a whole social side of, of councillor looking after not only the staff but looking in, into the bigger community. So from my perspective this is a good positive thing. Um, he talked to me afterwards, he gave the presentation. His view on it is he would like an elected group but he'd also like there to be an appointed 30% of people um, that come forward that have really good skills, like you mentioned that guy David Wayne before, is it? Yeah, who, who's um, on the, uh, he's a, a directors, there's a, a group of directors and stuff. And because one of the things he feels that, yes, it's nice to have elected people like a school teacher, but there, there's a whole lot of knowledge that is needed at governance level. And yep. having that 30% 30, 30 Different from the House Board because that's political appointments. He didn't think that was the idea, he, but and it was good. So I'm actually, and he needs to get re-employed with the new council because his term comes through. And I'd support if I was to tell you, if you get in, I'd like to see that guy reappointed. To, he's got continuity, and what he's done in the last three years has been excellent. And he's a guy that will guide. And actually, one of the things is you can be a motivating councillor and then you actually influence all the other councils in the country to improve and I think this guy's the tent pole and mm -hmm. out of South Waikato we can improve the whole country. There you go, that's the, thanks for asking me a hard question. Now, it's over to you now, you've got another three minutes left on the thing and we can go any direction you want. Uh, so my, my main concerns are our environment and that New Zealand has this clean green sticker that they like to throw at every country's TVs. Um, I don't think we're that clean and green to be honest. You walk around or you know, I'm a dairy farmer so I drive farm roads. There's always rubbish on the side of the roads, whether it's people from the community who go out there and dump it, whether it's truck drivers who just throw their lunch rubbish out or whatever. It could be a farmer, you know, doesn't like the next door neighbour, so he goes and dumps his rubbish out there. Okay, look, I'm hearing that's young person, that's, which is good, because there's a saying, if you're not a socialist by the age of 30, you're heartless, and if you're not a capitalist <laughs> after that, then you're headless. So I'm going to ask you a hard question. Material processing there is my background, yep. and I believe that down at Ate Marie there is a underground hot water thermal situation where we can get a thermal generating plant going, yep. which we can sell the electricity back. I want to see all the heat pumps in our inversion layer here, all that, and so basically every month you get a $300 power chip and you can just run your heat pump as much as you like so you don't have power and it's all out of the ground. That's great that you say that because I love renewable energy and I've been looking at all of the brand new things inventors have been coming out with. Some of them are quite odd and they won't work on a grander scale. Um, they're great for at your own home, but they've got a new windmill and it's not really a mill, it's more of a twice my size kind of duct. And what it does is it takes wind from every direction Surveying and funnels it, yeah. yeah, and funnels it down. And they are one third of the price of a normal windmill and they produce six times the amount of power and they actually produce power on almost windless days if they're put in the right Look, place. I would I, like for Tokara, Pataru to and Tirao to not have their room. own power bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, because that's for me this windmill side of things. So I'm going to follow you up after yeah. the video yeah. on that because I'm in the position of, of putting a windmill into a, a position and now you say six times better. And, um, and I'll look at that with a manufacturing option. Perhaps one of these sheds could be making the prototype. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Um, okay, I'm, this is fun. You've got another 15 minutes. I can have another go with this. So I'm going to stop this video here and we're going to get into some invention stuff. This is just boys <laughs> sort of things, but I'm still interested in having a chat. So thanks very much, Joss. Anyone like to say hello to out there? Uh, no. <laughs> How about say hello to your boss? Hello, Wayne. How's it going? <laughs>